Hi everybody, this is the Bee Lady Apiary, and I thought I would start doing a series of videos in which I gave you a few um, facts about bees, honeybees, which are the type of bees that we keep. This may not be true for uh, yellow jackets, um, wasps, or bumblebees, okay, carpenter bees, or it's hot in here again, I don't believe it, or anything like that, okay, these, this is specific to honeybees, whether it's true for the other bees, I don't know, okay, so, uh, number one, which is something, oh, I don't know if I need my glasses for this, something that We've mentioned several times on live streams is that um, bees do get to know you and they get to know their beekeepers. And how they do this is that they recognize your face. They really do. They get to recognize um, who you are. They can see through those um, nets that you have on. And uh, one step further, you know, as we talk to people routinely in our bee club, um, our bee clubs online and our bee clubs through meetings, um, you know, some of them think that they recognize your voice, um, your pheromones, because we all have pheromones, things like that. So they do become accustomed to you as a beekeeper. Okay. Um, Let's see, what did I have down here? Number two, the infamous banana scent. Um, you've heard us say on many uh, former live streams about um, the scent of bananas and how for some reason, oh, it's still hot, forgive me. If you're ever going to go around these or you're going to go... Um, like say to a flower garden or on a picnic or something like that, where you know there might be an abundance of bees, you may want to stay away from taking bananas as a fruit. You may want to take strawberries or apples or something like that because the scent of a banana, banana mimics the pheromone of the, of, um, is almost the same as um, oops, as an attack. So they will come after you, okay? It's an alarm. It's like, oh no, someone's coming after us, okay? Um, you've heard us talk about the guard bees. They stand right at the beginning of the hive and they guard the hive, that's what they literally do. I know a beekeeper will tell you that when they go down to the hive, the guard bees are outside and often, you know, like today when we were down there, we took off a lot of honey. And, um, you know, to store mostly away for them for the winter. And um, they didn't like it. They followed us all the way back up here into the garage. But even so, if we're going to take a break and, you know, like walk around the pond or something, the guard bees will follow you away from the hive and make sure that you go someplace else. They guard the hive. Um, they give off an alarm. You know, there's stranger danger here. So, um, and a banana, the scent of that sends off that um, same pheromone that they send off. Um, let's see. What was the next one? I think number three. Um, in the past 10 years, you might have seen in, you know, in the newspaper, in different places, magazines, television, um, offer as much as television is on these days. Um, there's an increase in beekeeping. And we always encourage everybody, if you have the wherewithal to have a hive or two, to think about it because of colony collapse. It's on the rise for many different reasons, Predominant, predominantly pesticides. There are an awful lot of pesticides on the market. You know, 
I don't, you know, I can under, how can I say this? When you're feeding a nation and you're exporting, I know it's a political topic, but you know, you're exporting food to different places on and on and on, and you're feeding a nation. Um, there's, you know, they say, well, we can't afford to have a whole crop go bad because of this or because of this or because of this. And, you know, there's pros and cons, you know, like anything. And there's a lot of organic gardening going around, you know, and a lot of HMO seeds that you can purchase. And, you know, one good um, way to look at it is uh, some homesteaders that are friends of ours, they do the, uh, I think it's the, the three plant roll, one that's going to fail, one for the bugs and critters, and one, one third for us. So that might be some way you want to look at it. But there is an increase in it. Um, as you know, we winterize our hives, and so we take huge losses up here in the north, which, you know, you have to, you know, there's a saying, plant where you're, you know, what is it, bloom where you're planted. Well, we can't just all move south and be a beekeeper there. You know, we have to be a beekeeper in the north with the rest of the thousands of beekeepers up here because they need beekeepers up here as well um a lot of you have asked how many hives do we have um when we opened our hives this summer or this spring i would say maybe march or so we had a high loss um you know every year we learn something different with our bees this is our seventh winter and every year we learn something different. Every winter is different. We're learning, you know, we learned a lot this past year. Um, so we ended up with all the merging and splitting and everything. We ended up starting with just six hives and we decided to stay with six hives. Uh, our beekeeping is like this. You know, we went from 46 to 26 to 12, to 20, to 6, you know, we, we're up and down, <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, we have this, this thing where we go through a season, and then every spring or so, we, we usually will, um, either through swarms, or through buying, um, what do you call them, nukes or something, will increase our bee yard substantially. This year, because of everything going on, and we weren't sure we were going to be able to get supplies, as some of you know, we purchased sugar in 25 pound bags. Well, everybody else is purchasing sugar in 25 pound bags, you know, because of shortages and things like that. Uh, farmers, uh, preppers, homesteaders, uh, regular people you know they're buying large quantities of sugar flour rice uh bread not well even uh yeast things like that so we thought okay we've got six beehives let's just stay with that and uh you've got you know no matter how many supplies we have you know let's just stay with that and see what happens as of today, we're up to 12. Um, that is because of some swarms. That is because of some splits. Uh, our 12 hives are very vibrant. They're uh, more than vibrant. We're probably going to end the season with more than 12. Many of these are going to have to be split. Um, we make little, little, little. <laughs> sorry folks we probably will catch another swarm but you can tell by just looking at them our boxes are higher than we want for going into the winter when i'm talking about boxes traditionally you have the deep the deep the supers going up we've shown you those in live streams which we probably will be doing we do it's been a long day uh we probably will be doing another live stream soon 
uh, our boxes are way too high. We have some hives down there with like seven boxes high. That's just too many boxes for going into the winter. So as we start to, you know, that's that's a lot, that's high. And, you know, we're going, I'll be doing a stream or a video and showing you what the bees do in the winter. And we're asking a lot of our bees to maintain the, you know, heat in a seven box high, it's not gonna work. So we'll be merging and splitting and assessing and everything. So we're going to have, um, we're gonna end up with more. But even at 12, that's more than we really thought we would have. Uh, we were prepped for way more than that, but you know, we didn't outwardly seek to, uh, to do more than that. Um, we will be treating for uh, varroa mites ooh, maybe in a week or so. Uh, we'll be doing a video on that. The varroa mite is uh, something that way back in the beginning of beekeeping here in the United States, they were here, they came over from some country I can't remember, but I'll have that information. I'll probably do a video out in the field. I don't know if it will be live. Um, I'm in the process of making bee food downstairs. Um, I'm working on a video while I do that. I'm working on a video showing you uh, how we feed them because while we're treating them for varroa mites, we cannot feed them. We basically lock them up in the hive and they don't get any feed for seven days. So we need to feed them and get them going, you know, for seven days. They're in they're in lockdown while we're treating them. We do lose um, not a lot, but a percentage of the bees during that time, but it's necessary or else the mites will kill them over the winter. Um, let's see. Bees, as you know, have five eyes, or if you didn't know, they have three. Uh, we've gone through this before, but I know everybody doesn't, you know, that's the best of all worlds. You come to all of our <laughs> all of our videos and you listen avidly. And as soon as I can figure out how to get my playlist in order without deleting them, I'll, I'll do that. But anyway, they have five eyes: two on the side, three on the top, and they um, navigate with the sun, with a fixed reference point. Um, on a cloudy day. They used Polaroid light, which is um, the light that's coming through the, um, the clouds. Okay, they're dependent upon the sun for navigating. You know, when they're first born, they go out, which is something I've said before, I've mentioned before, they go out of the high and they go straight up and they get their bearings, which is, you know, the navigation. Where am I? So that they know where they are, so that they won't get lost when they go foraging. The other thing which is really fascinating, which I don't know what number I'm on, I'm gonna just keep going here, um, is that they have a, and we've gone over this, but I'm gonna just, you know, keep going through things, is they have a magnetic structure in their stomach and this is probably, you know, and they're not the only animal. Fish have it. Uh, I forget the other list of animals that have it. Um, and um, they depend on that, that magnetic structure that's in their stomach. And something that a lot of people noticed when there was that huge series of earthquakes recently in California, a lot of the honeybees just started dropping. I mean, they just started dropping. If you go back and check on the internet, you may see, you know, and everybody says, ah, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. It wasn't a conspiracy theory for those people whose bees were dropping. And they said it was because theory. Now, this was a theory. Um, during an earthquake, the magnetic field of the earth is disrupted and the bees were confused disrupted however you want to coin it 
they got confused, they lost their bearings. You know, I don't know what the exact word is. Um, you can imagine, uh, maybe they were disoriented. Maybe they just got over nervous. I don't know what, but they just dropped. So it, it wasn't, <coughs> did I or didn't I? <coughs> I didn't, I did. Okay, I did, I did, I did. It was sad to see. It's something you may want to check on. But it was, you know, it wasn't, like I say, it wasn't nice for the beekeepers who lost them. But it, it was sad. Um, but, yeah, so, like I said, they're not the only animal. And you may find that, uh, <laughs> you may find that not only bees, but fish and other animals, if you have an earthquake in your area, uh, you know, they say that you can tell, like, how an earthquake is going to come by how an animal reacts. Now, I don't know if all animals have this magnetic whatever, uh, but that's one of the ways, the ones that do, that's one of the ways that they can tell. Um, last, uh, let's see, I've been making this video for a little over 16 minutes. Something I wanted to um, bring up. And I have to be very careful how I say this. Um, something that those of us that are beekeepers and in bee clubs and, and everything else that are uh, coming to our own bit, things that make you feel better. I'll put it like that. Um, there's a new field. I'm going to spell it. And you can look it up on your own. A P. I T H E R A E P H E. A B therapy. Okay? And that's just using the products of honeybees like the honey. Oh, I'm going to get my contacts and. Uh, uh, the venom, not the old, you know, the old stick your hand in there for arthritis, but the venom, the pollen, the royal jelly, things like that to help you feel better. Um, you can research that for yourself. There's a lot of information out there on it. I can't tell you any pros. I can't tell you any cons. I can only tell you it's... Um, it's been up and coming. I can tell you that as beekeepers, we didn't start this journey to, uh, like, you know, people will hear us and go, oh, do you sell the honey? Do you do this? We never thought about selling the honey. We never thought about selling the beeswax. We just wanted to um, take care of the bees because we felt compassion for the bees. Um, when it comes to animals, we're very compassionate. Uh, so many people mistreat animals, and so many people take animals for granted. I don't understand it. Oh, it's still hot. I, no matter what type of animal, be they birds or fish or anything, you may want to read articles about the decline of insects. You know, I get emails, people watch um, our video on the fireflies, and they say, oh, you know, we don't see fireflies anymore, or, you know, where are you, and I, you know, I, I my heart bleeds, you know, I, I can't imagine, you know, when, when things like that disappear from nature, uh, and I don't want to get on a big rant here, but sometimes you have to wonder what is so fantastic that we're replacing all of these things with, you know, I mean, what's, you know, why can't we have nature there and us over here? Why do we have to just, you know, displace everything? And it's in that mold that, you know, we decided to do beekeeping. You know, why do we have to, you know, why do we have to, um displace everything why do we have to poison everything 
It doesn't. It didn't make sense to us. And I'm sure to a lot of you and a lot of the channels that we follow and love, which is everybody, um, it doesn't make sense to you either. So, that's it. And before you know it, I'll be back with more B-Facts. And I hope you found some of the um, information in this short video at least interesting. If you have any more questions or something you'd like me to address, please just put it below in the comments. Um, on our channel, as you've noticed, I try to launch videos on everything. I take into consideration that some people don't want to click on a channel and see a bunch of these. It just isn't the thing that they want to see. Um, they don't want to see, you know, a whole frame of these movies all over. It just really doesn't make them feel comfortable, and I respect that. So I try to put up, you know, lots of different things. Uh, mostly a lot of nature, because I love nature. I absolutely love nature. Hence is why we live where we live. I, um, you know, I love nature. So... Having said all of that, if there's anything else you would like to know, then my mouse just went, oh, technology these days. Um, if there's anything else you would like me to cover in one of these little short videos about honeybees, let me know, and I'd be happy to do so. Until then, this is Bee Lady saying bye.